Paul shows the Corinthians the appropriate response is that we have a sorrowful response to sin. A sorrowful response to sin. And have not mourned instead. Here's what you should have done. You should have been grieving over this sin. You should have been broken over this sin. This word for mourning is the word used in the Septuagint of Ezra and Nehemiah when they saw the sinfulness of Israel and how Israel was continuing to break God's covenant and to defy God's law. And Ezra and Nehemiah, their hearts were mourning over the wickedness of the people of God. Isaiah and Jeremiah speak of the land of Israel figuratively mourning over the sin of its people, that the land itself was grieved about all the sin that was being committed on the land. In the Septuagint, the Greek Old Testament, David mourned like this when his son Absalom died. This is a deep grieving, a deep sorrow. This is not a superficial sorrow over sin. This is a profound mourning that takes place. Why does it take place? There's two reasons why. First, because of the person who has sinned. I mean, we look at that person and we go, this is tragic for you. I mean, look what you're doing to yourself. Look how you're destroying your life. Look at how you're destroying your family. Look at how you're destroying your ministry. Look at how you're destroying your neighbors and your testimony and your kids. And look at what this sin is doing to you. And we mourn because of that. But there's something even more important than that that we mourn over. We mourn because sin has defiled the bride of Christ. And we grieve when Christ's pure bride is defiled by sin. And so we grieve for the church. We grieve for the testimony of the gospel. We are to reflect to the world the holiness of God. We're to be a light shining in the darkness and how it should grieve our hearts when that light that should shine so brilliantly through us is darkened because of our sin. And by our sin, I don't mean personally my sin. I mean our sin as a church. If there's sin that goes on that's tolerated and not dealt with, that darkens the light of our gospel testimony. It diminishes the view the world has of the glory of God. How we should mourn when someone in our assembly becomes an occasion for the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme his holy name. Even more than we're sorrowful for that person, we should be sorrowful for the glory of Christ being maligned by his enemies. And the purity of his bride being defiled by wickedness. 